I found this desk on the side of the road. Somebody had put it out for free for anyone to take. It was in rough shape, but I could see that it had potential, so I took it home for some repair and refinishing. This desk was probably made in the 1950s or 60s. It's a walnut veneer. It's got lots of veneer chips. The top is a plastic laminate that's supposed to look like wood. And the finish is in rough shape. I started by removing the old finish, and I did this with a scraper. First I had to remove the drawer pulls. This finish was very thin, so it came off easily. Here you can see the shadow left by the drawer pull part of the veneer that was covered by the drawer pull is darker and more brown than the rest of the veneer, which has faded to a lighter color and it's more amber than brown. This little scraper helps to get into the tight spots. When you scrape the finish off, sometimes there are some little spots that are missed, but if you get the light just right across the surface, they show up as shiny spots. Here you can see there are a couple of small shiny spots, so I just go back with a scraper or this little utility knife blade and scrape those off. Once the scraping was done, then I could start working on the veneer repair. I started with this big one on uh, the corner of a drawer, and I began by just cleaning up the ragged edges. And you can see that I left some of the original finish around the edge, and I did that because there might be some glue squeeze out when I glue on the patch for the veneer and by leaving the original finish there that glue won't get onto the nice clean newly scraped veneer so it's just protecting the veneer from the glue and then I can scrape that finish off later and then I made a tracing of the area that I would need to patch and I taped that tracing to a piece of new veneer and cut out a patch by just following the line that I traced. Then I applied some wood glue. And a little bit of tape just to hold it down while I got clamps on it. And clamped it up. This patch was a lot smaller and the shape was a lot more simple than the previous one. So I didn't do the tracing, I just cleaned up the edges with a chisel and cut out a small piece of new veneer and glued it on.
Once the glue was dry, then I could take the clamps off. and clean it up with some scraping and sanding. And this would also remove the old finish that I had left on there to protect it from the glue. And I trimmed off any excess around the edges with a utility knife blade. I'm just using this block of wood here as a backer for the blade as I cut so I don't tear out the veneer. There was a small spot on the corner here that didn't get glued down, so I just used a little bit of super glue to glue that down. And that's accelerator that I sprayed on there which just makes the super glue dry quicker. And it was the same process for this patch. This spot was a little bit different because it was so deep and I had to use three layers of veneer to build it up. The first two layers I glued down with super glue. That sped things up a little bit. And the last one I used wood glue so that I would have a little extra time to get it positioned correctly. The top edge of this drawer was very ragged and I decided to use a wood filler on this instead of trying to do many little individual veneer patches. I went with a water-based wood filler on this, but if I was to do this again, I would probably use an epoxy filler for this. This water-based filler works great for some things, but you really have to build it up in thin layers so that it can dry. And you can also speed it up with a heat gun, which I did here. But it takes a while to build up layer by layer. But with the epoxy putty, you can put a thicker layer on there all at once. And then when the epoxy putty dries, it's probably a little bit more durable for a corner, like I'm using it here, than the, than the water-based filler. And the epoxy is also easier to sculpt in some cases to get it to the final shape. So this worked in the end, but if I were to do it again, I would probably use epoxy putty. Once the filler was dry and the whole drawer front was completely sanded, then I needed to color the filler a bit. 
and to do this I used gel stain and you want to make sure you do this after you get all your sanding done otherwise the sanding will sand off the gel stain and here I'm just cleaning off a little bit of excess with some mineral spirits and then I sanded the rest of the desk The legs had these metal caps at the bottom, but two of them were missing. So I had to decide what to do about that. And I actually liked what the leg looked like underneath the cap. It had an interesting shape. So I decided just to take all of them off. Once they were off, then I had to scrape any finish that was underneath the cap. And these were nice, thick metal caps. So I'll hang on to them and see if I can use them in another project. I wanted to see if I could get away without using stain on this one. So I first just applied a very thin coat of wipe-on oil-based polyurethane. And it didn't look too bad, but I felt like it was a bit pale and uninteresting looking. So I decided to go with some stain after all. And I chose some gel stain. The color is candlelight. In this shot, the bigger drawer on the left already has stain on it. And I'm just applying it to the smaller one. Having that thin coat of polyurethane on there would mean that the stain would be absorbed a little bit less, but it wasn't an issue because I didn't need a really deep stain color on this, just a little bit to make the color a little bit richer. And then a small mishap occurred. I had the desk up on a work surface and I was spinning the desk around and one end of it fell off of the work surface down onto a drawer that was beneath it on the floor. And the corner of the desk hit the drawer front and made a deep dent on the drawer that I had just stained. So then I had to fix that. And to do this, I began by steaming out the dent as much as I could. I applied some water to it and then took a piece of a damp cloth and a hot soldering iron and applied the iron to the cloth. And the water and the steam gets absorbed by the grain of the wood and expands the grain so then hopefully it raises up again since it had been crushed by the desk that fell on it. And this worked pretty well. It did come back up a bit. But then I had loose veneer that needed to be glued back down. To glue the veneer back down, I used some super glue. And then I stained the whole drawer front again, since I had sanded off the stain I put on there previously. And at that point it looked pretty good, but there were some dark lines where the veneer had been damaged. So I wanted to touch those up so your eye wasn't drawn to them as much. And I was most concerned about the ones that went 
across the grain of the wood because those always are the ones that pop out more. The lines that are going with the grain, sometimes they just blend in and you don't, you don't even see them. So to touch those up, I used some acrylic craft paint, just mixed up a color that looked good and brushed it on. Once that repair was done, then I could move on. And the next step was to spray a clear top coat over everything. In this case, I went with a clear spray lacquer from a can. When I started this project, I wasn't sure if I was going to do anything with the laminate top that's on there. I could have put some real walnut veneer over it. That would have ended up costing around $100. And I got this desk for free, and I kind of wanted to keep it a low-budget project. So I decided just to leave the top as it is for now. But I did need to address the side, which needed to be refinished. And the edge of the top actually looked to be real solid walnut. Here you can see the seam at the back where the edge piece is, and then the middle core of the top. I'm not sure what that is, but it looks to be real walnut on the outside. It didn't need much. I just scraped off the old finish. and then put the same stain on it that I used on the rest of the desk. And then that also got sprayed with some clear lacquer. The last step was to clean up the drawer pulls as much as I could. I kind of liked the aged look that they had, so I didn't want them to look brand new and I couldn't make them look brand new anyway. So I just used some metal polish and a Dremel and just cleaned them up as much as I could. And here it is, all finished. Thanks for watching.